scheduled just 24 minutes from now to expand the size of the crew on board the orbital laboratory from two crew members, which it has been for the past three weeks, to five crew members. This view from cameras on the truss of the International Space Station showing the Soyuz TMA-17 that lifted off about 48 hours ago from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan in a freezing rain, now 220 miles over the southern Pacific Ocean, about to begin a southwest to northeasterly course that will carry it across the Andes Mountains of the west coast of South America just moments from now. On board the Soyuz TMA-17 in the center seat is Soyuz Commander Oleg Kotov, about uh, to arrive at the International Space Station for the second time. To his left as the board engineer for the Soyuz, as he was two days ago for launch, Japanese astronaut Soichi Noguchi, who is the a flight engineer for Expedition 22 and 23, representing JAXA, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. Seated to the right of Kotov, NASA astronaut T.J. Creamer, uh, who was about to board the International Space Station for the first time. Of course, this is Noguchi's second trip to the International Space Station. He was a crew member aboard uh, the shuttle Discovery for the STS-114 mission in 2005, the return to flight following the Columbia accident. The three crew members have been in excellent shape. This automated approach uh, for the Soyuz TMA-17 for a docking to the International Space Station has been flawless to this point. The uh, Soyuz currently in a fly-around to precisely uh, position the Soyuz about 150 meters away from its port of call. That will be the Earth-facing port, the Nader port, of the Zarya module of the International Space Station, which was the first element uh, launched uh, in the ISS assembly sequence back on November 20th. 1998 from Baikonur atop a proton rocket. Also at the International Space Station, docked to the aft port of the Zvezda service module, is the Soyuz TMA-16 that was launched on September 30th, just about uh, three months ago, carrying Jeff Williams and Max Sarayev to the complex. Williams and Sarayev have been a lonely duo on board the International Space Station for the past three weeks following the departure of Roman Romanenko, Frank DeWinna, and Bob Thirsk, who landed on December 1st in their Soyuz capsule. Again, the TMA-16 docked to the aft port of the Zvezda service module. They uh, will, that spacecraft with Williams and Sarayev aboard will be relocated to the new Poisk module, the MRM-2, the Mini Research Module 2, that arrived at the International Space Station for an automated docking back on November 12th. The third Russian vehicle at the International Space Station, as you can see in this graphic, is the Progress 35 cargo ship that is docked to the piers docking compartment. The uh, Soyuz is just uh, 200 meters away from uh, docking to the International Space Station. The uh, fly around uh, will be completed just about a minute from now, at which point about 10 minutes of station keeping uh, will be initiated by the onboard computers of the Soyuz. You can see uh, from this view from the Soyuz cameras the International Space Station. Uh, the Soyuz now beginning a roll program to precisely align its forward docking probe to the docking port on the Earth-facing side of the Zarya module. You can see in the upper uh, right-hand corner that uh, flashing uh, strobe-like effect. That is the core's automated antenna that is sending out uh, navigation signals through a radio beacon system to a comparable system on the Russian segment of the International Space Station to provide range rate and rate of closure, which at this point is about a half a meter per second. That will slow to a rate of about one-tenth of a meter per second for contact and capture at the time of docking. Once the International Space Station is up to a five-man crew, just uh, moments from now uh, with the docking and the subsequent hatch opening an hour and a half later, the two crews will have an opportunity to greet one another as they move into the holiday season, uh, 220 miles above the Earth. Uh, that uh, will only kick off a busy evening uh, for uh, the two uh, crews uh, joined together as one as the Expedition 22 crew on board the complex as they begin to uh, dry out uh, their launch and entry suits. That would be Kotov, Creamer, and Noguchi. They will deactivate the Soyuz systems, uh, begin to transfer a small amount of uh, cargo that was carried up on the Soyuz, and uh, familiarize themselves with station systems. Again, Kotov uh, and Noguchi will be... Uh, uh, entering the International Space Station for the second time. Uh, this is uh, new turf for T.J. Creamer, who, along with Kotov and Noguchi, will be on board the International Outpost until the end of May. 
An excellent view of the Soyuz TMA-17 as it approaches the west coast of South America at an altitude of 220 statute miles. Again, the Soyuz system is functioning in excellent shape as it uh, completes its fly-around and begins a period of station keeping. The uh, two crews, uh, again, will be running through a series of initial uh, procedures. Uh, once the hatches are open, a safety briefing will be initiated by uh, Station Commander Jeff Williams uh, for the newly arrived trio on board the complex as he and Max Sarayev uh, familiarize Kotov, Kramer, and Noguchi with the uh, location for all of the uh, stowage activities as well as um, where the escape routes are for their respective Soyuz vehicles. That is a commonplace activity following a Soyuz arrival at the International Space Station, as well as a shuttle arrival for that matter. The two crews uh, will continue to work until about 2 a.m. Central Time on uh, Wednesday morning. They'll begin an extended sleep period. Uh, the day Wednesday uh, will be strictly an off-duty day for the two crews. They'll press back into a normal complement of activities on Christmas Eve on Thursday. Once again, uh, we are in a period of station keeping. We should uh, resume the automated approach uh, upon command uh, from the Russian flight control team here at the Russian Mission Control Center outside Moscow about eight minutes from now as uh, Oleg Kotov in the center seat, uh, the call sign for the Soyuz is Pulsar, uh, the same call sign uh, that was used uh, when he was launched uh, back on the uh, previous expedition uh, mission, along with uh, Fyodor Yurchikin. And uh, the approach uh, will again uh, continue uh, as uh, the Soyuz closes ever so slowly uh, for a link up uh, to the uh, nadir port of the Zarya module of the International Space Station. A short time after that, the forward docking probe will be retracted, and the hooks and latches will be closed to form a hard mate between the two vehicles, after which uh, a period of leak checks will be conducted over the course of one orbit of the Earth. The hatch opening is actually scheduled for 6.35 p.m. Central Time this evening. Press. Uh, in a night pass, so uh, turn on the searchlight, activating, and you can activate filters uh, based on whichever, whatever is convenient. Okay, the searchlight is on. Copy. We can see the picture. Full SARS to Mission Control Moscow. Go ahead. Your go to press uh, to final approach. Zero, 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 uh, keyed in. Can we press execute? Execute. Executing. And key station keeping in just in case. Will do. And as you heard, uh, Russian flight controllers uh, offering uh, Soyuz Commander Alec Kotov uh, the green light uh, to press ahead for final approach uh, with, that will be initiated just a few moments from now. The two uh, spacecraft, the Soyuz and the International Space Station, flying high over Argentina, uh, moving from southwest to northeast in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator, about to enter an orbital sunset that will occur just off the coast of Uruguay. Uh, approach is stable. Copy. Thank you. And with perfect alignment having been uh, confirmed by Kotov on board the Soyuz, uh, the command has been given uh, to...